In this video, we're going to talk about CSS positioning. I have a basic HTML file here, and we have a parent box and two child boxes, and then some very simple styles here. Uh, we've got some resets here, margin and padding of zero, box sizing, border box. On the body, uh, I have it set to 200 view height and 100 view width. That is so that we can have some room to scroll, and then a padding of two rem so that we can see the outsides of the boxes. Then on the parent box, I've just got some basic height and width and setting the background and padding so that we can see it. And then on the children, very similar to the height and width and then background colors so that we can differentiate the two. And the first thing that we're going to look at is static. So static positioning is the default positioning. If we do not declare a position, then it is static. And so static positioning flows along with the HTML document flow. So child box one and then child box two. The next position that we'll look at is relative. So relative positioning is similar to static, but we can now change the top, right, left, and bottom attributes. So now if we set the top to 100 pixels, you'll see that it moves down 100 pixels. And so this is relative to its original position. So if I add a right here of 50 pixels, it's going to move 50 pixels away from the right side of its original position. So you see now that it is outside of its parent and it's overflowing the other child. But its original space is reserved. Generally, relative is not used in positioning elements in this way because it kind of messes up the document flow. We'll look at a better use case for relative in just a minute. Next, let's look at absolute positioning. Now you'll notice that the green box is gone. Well, it's actually behind the orange box. Absolute positioning removes the element from the document flow and positions itself in reference to a container. Now that container has to have a position assigned to it as well. Right now, our parent box does not have a position assigned to it. So the child box is going to reference the top level element, which is the HTML element. So now if we add right zero pixels, you'll see now that it is all the way to the right of the screen. It is positioning itself to the HTML element, which is all the way on the right side of the screen. So if I change this to left, you'll see that it goes all the way to the left side of the screen. Let's add a top to this of 100 pixels and it moves it down a bit. Now, if we wanted the green box to be on top of the orange box, we could use a Z index. So I could add a Z index to the green element and we'll just say one. And when I save that, you're gonna notice that it doesn't do anything. Z index only works if the element has a position. So we'll need to assign a position to the green element as well. And we'll just assign it a relative position because we don't want to remove it from the document flow. We want it to stay where it is, but just come on top of the orange box. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna take that position and Z index off. And now let's look at the most common use case for a relative position. So since absolute positions itself to its reference container, if we want this box to stay within the parent, we have to assign a position to the parent. So we'll assign the parent a position of relative. And now you can see that the box is aligned left to its parent. And if we change this to right, you'll see that it goes to the right of the parent. So again, since we have the parent box assigned to a position, the absolute box is now referencing the parent. Now notice when I scroll, when this is set to absolute, the box scrolls with the page. Now let's look at position fixed. And we'll leave the same right zero and top of 100 pixels. And now you'll see here that fixed positions itself to the screen, not to any specific container. And now watch when we scroll, it stays exactly where you put it on the screen and it will never move even when scrolled. 
Now the last position that we'll look at is sticky. I'm going to remove all of these from the orange element and we're going to add this to the green element. So position sticky is a combination of relative and fixed. Right now it is acting like it's relatively positioned. As I scroll, nothing happens. It stays where it should. But let's assign a value here to the top. Let's say zero. And you'll see here that it didn't move. It is still acting like it's relatively positioned. But as I scroll, when it hits the top zero, you'll notice that it now becomes fixed. And then when it hits the bottom of its parent container, it stops. So it cannot leave its parent container. As I scroll back up, it will again stay at the top until it arrives back at its original position. So a common use case for this is a header or a menu bar that you want to stick to the top once you've scrolled past a certain point. There are a lot of cool things that you can do with sticky. Here's a great example of what you can do with sticky positioning. This is a code pen by Adrian Dono Mateo. If my videos have helped you in any way and you have the means to do so, help me out on Patreon. And if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.